I promised that I would record why you should use VMs. For some of you, this may not be really what you'll use every day, but VMs, virtual machines, are really useful tools, especially in the kind of work I do. I teach computer repair, among them computer installations, and it's, I used to have to get another computer, and I have lots of computers, so that's not the issue, but I'm hauling around this 25-pound computer sitting around and, and it's in the middle of an install, the bell rings, the kids go to their next class, I'm stuck with a machine in the middle of something, I can't stop it. With a VM, I can. Also, I frequently will, um, I, just, I just run a lot of stuff. I do a lot of different things. Um, for And, and I, as I promised, as any good chef would do, I've got all of my stuff ready so I can show you. What you see here in the window is VMware Player. I'm on a, physically I'm on a different machine than I was recording before. I could actually take one of the VMs I created on that other machine and put it on this machine and run it and it would run just like it was native to this machine. So I could actually, uh, for the VM I've created for the Google Hangouts for instance, I could actually send that VM file to Alice and she could run it on her machine so long as she had a VMware player type software. It's called a virtual hard drive, VHD. That's Microsoft's proprietary name for the same idea. But it's a virtual machine that you can pass around and you can actually get these. If you come to the, in this case, you have download virtual appliance. And I do this periodically when I need something special that I know someone has created. For instance, maybe I want to have a VM of Windows 8 running. Now, I wouldn't run that on this particular machine because it's older and as you can see in the background it's running Windows 7 but I, could, I know a lot of people who tested Windows 8 in a VM on their Windows 7 machines or on their other faster machines even sometimes on Ubuntu um, so you have that option you will notice that I've got a lot of stuff here a lot of different options the ones with the period numbers traditionally are an, a particular install that I did on that period and what I can do oops, what I can do is suspend it and it's it's not gonna let me show you that but if you there it is it is currently in a state called suspended it's kind of suspended animation now this was this happened to me when I was installing Windows XP and showing that to students but it works the same way regardless. I suspend it. I stop it in time. So I'm in the middle of install. The bell rings. I suspend it. Tomorrow I come back to the same install. We're at exactly the same place. So that's a major use and a major benefit. Something that can't be done with traditional hardware. So in addition to um, to eliminating a lot of uh, a lot of physical stuff that I'm having to haul around. I also have saved myself some trouble because students don't miss uh, the in, if you will, the extra time that they would wait with it. Moodle is, well, you're familiar with Moodle, hopefully, since you're in, since you're in IASC. Turnkey Moodle is a Moodle server uh, already s set up for you. I've got a couple of others here I want to show you, though, rather than just do about them. Here's Ubuntu. Now, this is a different version than I had in the other machine, just because I didn't transfer the other over, but here is an, an Ubuntu session, which just doesn't like me right now. Um, sometimes the virtual machines work great, other days, not so much, and this is a relatively slow machine, and I'm asking it to do a lot because I have five VMs up, and I'm recording. I also use a server periodically. This is Discovery Server for the Cisco Networking Academy program. It, it allows me to emulate uh, DNS and let's see DNS DHCP if I turn it on uh, it has an email server it has a web server and it has an FT, both FTP and TFTP servers built into it this is an I, I use it as an appliance this way I don't have to physically have it in class and again I can set up this VM and share it with students I could put it on a machine for students without worrying about having to reconfigure everything I might have Windows XP and this is an install I did here is Windows XP yes this is Windows XP inside Windows XP so I have two separate operating systems operating at the same time 
This is really great because you're going to say, why would I ever want that? Well, this is really great when you want to test a piece of software. I'm not sure that this software is any good. I'm not sure it's stable. I'm not sure if it will run, if it will do what I want, but I don't want to risk my production machine, my regular machine. I load it into a VM. The VM has all of my, can have all of my security settings, can have my antivirus, can have my everything. But because it's separate from my machine, I can mess with it, and if I screw something up, I just erase it and start over. Or better, if I'm working on a copy of it, I just don't, you know, I'm, I'm ready to erase it. So it can be very useful from that perspective of testing. And again, I'm testing, this happens to be XP, but I could have 7 here, I could have Vista if you really want to torture yourself. I could have Windows 8. Um, there even are emulators for Android. Um, and it isn't a full operating system. Let's minimize that and minimize because I want to show you one last use. You'll notice that this looks like Windows 7. I'm going to max it so you can see. This physical station, this is the reverse of what I was just showing you. It's still a VM, but my computer isn't generating this VM. I'm running a piece of software called VMware View or Horizon View it's, is its new name. And you can actually run this on your Android devices and on your iPads. Uh, it does not work on an iPhone. I've tried. Um, this gives me a full Windows 7 desktop. But this particular Windows 7 desktop is at my school district. Here are all my files as if I were sitting at my desk right now. Everything exactly as if I were sitting at my desk is now available when I'm sitting at the dining room table at home through a VM. It's the reverse of what I showed you. What I showed you before is you running VMs on your machine, others on your machine. Well now, instead of having guest operating systems on my machine, I am the guest somewhere else. And this could be anywhere else. Anywhere on the internet I can be hosted. But this gives me access. I can print from my from the dining room table or from the from the recliner. I can do my grades, whatever it happens to be that I need to physically be on my school campus, I now no longer have to be on my school campus. Now you're gonna say uh, my district doesn't use that. Well, I'll wager you do because p most districts and actually a lot of businesses too have gone to thin clients. I just got upgraded from a Pano thin client to a Wise thin client, W-Y-Z-E. It's fairly typical, fairly common. There are a bunch of manufacturers that do it. Wise is actually a Dell product. I just learned that. Um, but thin clients are virtual machines. The actual computer is somewhere else. Well, that's exactly what we're seeing here. The actual computer that's running this physically is at my district office on the other side of town. And I'm connecting to it as if I were at my own workstation at school, exactly the same as if I'm sitting on my de at, my, at a desk at the district office, exactly as if I were sitting in a conference room somewhere and I can do this from home. I can do this from Starbucks. I can be at a conference. If someone, if I have need for a document, I was in a conference in May, I had need for a particular document that I happened to have saved at school and I knew it. Well, this is taking the cloud a different direction than what Google does because I didn't have it as a Google Doc. My district hasn't made that migration yet. Next year, I've been promised. The other nice thing for me is that this is Windows 7. And I don't have Windows 7 on my machine. Instead, I now have access to Windows 7. And my district can give me access to other stuff. For instance, they have Adobe Acrobat Pro here. I, <laughs> that's expensive to license. It's $200. And they have it for all the administrators. I, long story why they, the admins needed it at one point, like five years ago. I asked for it. I said, hey, can you give it to me? And they said, well, just go to the VM. It's there. Oh, now I can edit my Acrobat Reader files, my Acrobat files. I can, I can edit those because I've got the full version. Is it going to be as fast? No. 
you're in virtualization. It's a little bit slower, but I have access to everything I need right here uh, to do most of my job. For those who use data director as part of their jobs, I can even do the data scanner itself directly from within the VM. So it's a really cool tool that makes my life a lot easier. Okay, that was my promise. I promised you that I would show you why you want to use a VM, testing, and then in this case, the reverse direction. I showed you before that we could have multiple sessions running and uh, it's a really cool tool to use. Virtual machines, uh, VMware Player is the one I use, but there are a lot of different vendors for it. Talk to your district if you're curious which one they would support and ask me questions if you've got them. All right.